Hi everyone, this is Emrullah. Welcome to Avengers Lightning Talks. Today Mesut will be with us to talk about how we can centralize monitoring systems. Hi Mesut, uh, you can start when you're ready. Thank you. Hi everybody, uh, this is Mesut from Avengers. Uh, we generally, we regularly uh, doing lightning talks in the company, but this time we want to make it online. Uh, starting from me. Uh, today, I want to talk about the subject uh, that is centralized monitoring system for automated tests. Uh, and I will use Elasticsearch and Kibana for monitoring these test results. Uh, let's start then. Uh, I can introduce myself. My name is Mesut Güneş. Uh, I'm working for Avengers for about two years and I am a QA engineer at Avengers. I, I regularly want to write some blog posts on my blog at testlist.com. Test you can find some uh, good article there. Uh, okay, then let's start. What is our agenda today? Our agenda is why we need a monitoring system for automated tests. I will talk about this subject because monitoring system is generally a uh, system monitoring for everyone that want to use uh, it for their uh, systems. But this time we want to make it uh, for our automated test results. So we will, I, will uh, I will touch the following subject also. What are the automated tests? And, and then what are the potential benefits of using monitoring system for automated tests? And I will also use the use these technologies to understand the subject uh, i will use uh, elastic search kibana and our test will run on uh, firebase test lab uh, so i will need to use gcloud and gsutil util uh, cli tools and our tests are written uh, native android and uh, ios uh, library which is which are XCI test and Expresso. Okay, let's start for, uh, with the first section. What's a centralized centraliz uh, centralization of a logging system? Uh, for maybe 10 or 15 years, we have using a CI/CD pipeline for somehow, and it is mature for. Uh, building our application and deploying this application to uh, test environment and then live environment. Uh, but later on, we were adding some tests on our CI environment. And finally, the uh, CI environment, continuous integration and continuous delivery environment, the pipeline, has lots of logs. These logs, including test results and building results and other artifacts that creating during the pipeline run. So every log is valuable in their context. context. Uh, for example, when you build an application, it is valuable to see if, it is, if, if there is something wrong or not. Uh, if everything goes well and it builds the application and it creates an artifact, it's valuable in that context. Uh, similarly, uh, Test result logs is also uh, valuable in their context. When we are when we are running our tests, uh, these tests can be unit tests, can be UI tests, can can be uh, microservice and API tests. It can be anything that can be run automatically. So uh, connecting these logs in a common place is the meaning of centralization of logging system. And I will talk about this subject today. Okay, let's see the second subject. What are the automated tests? Before going deep into the subject, we need to clarify the things that we are discussing it basically. So what are the testing uh, automated test? Automated test, automated test, basically any test types and any, uh, at any level, that can be that can we can run them automatically in uh, over the tools can be called as automated test. So we need 
we need to understand test levels and test types. Uh, let's see the picture. As you can see the picture, uh, we can define our test types uh, by defining the test levels. So we can run our unit test at unit level. Uh, at unit level, uh, we can run functional or non-functional tests. These are including unit tests uh, for functional tests. And uh, for the non-functional tests, we can run load tests, security, and uh, code coverage metrics uh, in this level. Also, the next level is integration level. For the integration level, we have also functional and non-functional tests. Functional tests are including unit integration test, component test, component integration test. Uh, also, microservice test is in here. Uh, for the non-functional part, we are also having have load, stress, and security tests as as in unit test, as in the unit test. But for non-functional test, it is debatable that contract test is here or not, because contract test is written against microservice testing, with checking some some scheme and data over the returning request. So it doesn't mean actually a functional test. So I wanted to put in in, in the non-functional test column. And the next level is system. In the system level, a functional test can be end-to-end -end test because our system is ready and we can run our end-to-end -end test here. And the next one, uh, and non-functional test, we can also run load, stress, security, and reliability test, and also scalable and maintainable to test. And the next level is acceptance level. Uh, for this level, our system is open to uh, real world and people can use it. So UAT test can be run on this acceptance level as a functional test. And alpha and beta testing is also functional test for acceptance test level. Uh, for about non-functional tests, we can also run load, stress, security, and usability test here. Also, we can run A-B test on, for a non-functional test. So these are the, all testing types and with, the, with regarding the test level. Uh, most of the tests in unit and integration level, we want to automate them because as uh, test pyramid says that the more tests in the low level, the more efficient and more faster uh, we have test run. So uh, starting from unit level, we should automate every test that we can automate, auto, uh, that we can automate. Basically automate tests are any test types that can be run with tools at any level of, uh, any level of system. So let's go into the next, uh, next step. So what, what means the monitoring system for automated tests? As I said, generally monitoring system is used for system to monitor what's happening in the system. Uh, we, but this time we want to implement it to see our reports for testing part, for general automated tests. Uh, we are using lots of tools and technologies with different languages to run our tests such as our environment, our uh, technology stack can be Java-based or can be .NET-based or can be Python-based, but our testing suite can be uh, contain lots of different technologies. And all of these tools and technologies can create different type of results and type of reports, such as it can be create XML reports, it can be create JSON results, it can be HTML or simple text. So understanding each of them has, uh, you need to have some capabilities to log on these test results and what is, uh, what is going wrong with the system. Instead of this, we can create a monitoring system to export every data and then, and then uh, we create a common understanding with the monitoring system of uh, automated results. Yeah, this is why 
the main reason, actually, this is why the main reason for creating a monitoring system for automated tests. Okay, let's go to the next stage. Why we need a monitoring system for automated tests? Up to now, I wanted to explain the monitoring system and its benefit, but in this subject, I will go deep into the uh, benefits of having a monitoring system for automated tests. First one, I can say that we can increase the team awareness. How we can increase the awareness? If everything in the system are transparent, then people can see what's going on behind the scene. Then everyone understand the system, and everyone everyone can uh, can understand the monitoring system result uh, result the test run against the product, and it can highlight how much of them passed and failed. So it is a good point to uh, display the current situation of the product. So people can uh, can see the all result of automated test and can uh, make a judgment about the uh, quality of the system. So in this way, we can uh, create an awareness and increase the awareness about the quality and the contribution, and second and the most important part for me, because everyone can write tests for any type of uh, type uh, any any type of test if he wants to write it. For monitoring system, it can be self and self explain system that you can easily see the separation between test types and product. So if you say if you are uh, let's say you are an Android guy and you want to improve the quality of your application. And you are seeing that the number of tests written against the Android application is half of the uh, number of the uh, automatic tests that written for iOS part. So you can feel that I need to contribute some part of the Android application and write new tests to cover and cover new cases and remove the gap between two applications. So it can be understandable that everyone can contribute for testing, for writing tests in this fashion. So next benefit of having monitoring system, quality centric development. What this means is software development is a continuous effort. So which means that we are having, uh, we are adding a new feature or new developments for every with every comments on the product which means that we are uh, developing the product continuously so what about uh, what about uh, improving the quality at the same minute we should also improve the quality continuously if there is a gap between feature and written automated test then the coverage, uh, test coverage, code coverage, uh, will be reduced. Then everyone can understand that in our, uh, the quality of the application is becoming less and less. So everyone will be focused on the quality. And finally, there will be a quality centric development. This is one of the benefits of having monitoring system for automated tests. And one, uh, the next one is increase the number of automated tests. When you are seeing the number of automated tests is stable, it can be good. But every, with the every commit, as I said in the uh, previous item, uh, our application is developing and it is continuously adding something on it. So we need to increase the number of automated tests to cover new cases and new features. So at the end, with respect to the feature and the comment, uh, we should also develop uh, our, we should also add new automated tests in our suites. Yeah, the next one is complete working process, continuous in integration pipeline. Uh, as I said in, in, in the previous section, uh, continuous integration pipeline must be focusing on uh, building application and deployment deployment things. But 
uh, for fully and completely working pipeline, there should be some test on the uh, on the pipeline to check whether the application is good to go further. If there is no no test, if or some tests are failing, then there is some something wrong with the system. So test is the uh, crucial part of uh, pipeline. If you can think some some pipeline like this, there is no test, but everything is automated. Then you cannot be sure that the pipeline is working uh, working uh, working good because it can fail at any time if there is no automated test. So automated test is a, is the crucial part of our pipeline. Monitoring system can help. Uh, we have to see if it is if the test if the automated tests are good enough for our system or not. Yeah, the next item is easier debugging. Uh, easier debugging is one of the part of a uh, cent centralized mo uh, logging system. You can think that if there is an, any, any failure, any exception, any, uh, anything that's wrong with the system, you can start debugging, the, uh, debugging this uh, exception from a uh, monitoring system or centralized logging system. Um, in our application, in, in, in this talk, we are using Kibana and Elasticsearch. Elasticsearch also has some good features, such as it can, it, it can alert you when there's anomalies in the system with some help of uh, artificial intelligence. So yeah, uh, this is the, one of the good part, uh, one, of the, uh, one of the most important benefit of having uh, centralized monitoring system. Okay, let's go to the next part. As I said, our, uh, our uh, lightning talk is including a monitoring system with Elasticsearch. So what is Elasticsearch? Uh, Elasticsearch, the first release was released in 2010. Uh, after then, it became the de facto, de facto search engine in the, in the industry. Uh, it is commonly used for full text search, business analytics, and uh, log analytics, security intelligence, and some of the operational intelligence. So Elasticsearch is the heart of the Elastic stack. Uh, Elasticsearch search is an open source search engine, uh, engine and it is built on Apache, Apache Lucene. Uh, it provides us a, a RESTful API to feed the Elasticsearch database. As you can see, it is this is the common uh, architecture for Elastic Stack. When you have a log, as here, log stash can collect your log, and log stash can some transformation in in your log, and then it can export your data to Elastic Search database. As I say, Elastic Search is the heart of the Elastic Stack, so it is. Uh, it is capabilities is very well, and you can use for searching as a full text search and al analyzing your data. So after you having your data in Elasticsearch, you can create uh, Kibana on top of Elasticsearch data. Uh, Kibana is mainly using for uh, visualization and managing your data. Let's see what is Kibana. Kibana is, so, is also a product from Elasticsearch and it is open source visual, uh, visualization tool uh, that is designed to use Elasticsearch data to create visualization. Uh, it has some capabilities to create uh, flexible charts, graphs, heat maps, and histograms. So it can be understandable for everyone to uh, check if our data is correct with the, with the created graph. And with this system, you can, uh, you can interacti interactively see what is going on uh, behind the system. Okay, if there is no question, let's see the demo. As I said, our system, uh, our uh, demo is 
composing of using Elasticsearch, Kibana for running uh, our Android and iOS test uh, on Firebase. So I have a, I have created a secret to run Android and iOS application uh, on Firebase. Uh, if you can if you can see the uh, script, I can explain it from the script. Then we can run it on the on the Firebase. Let's see them. Uh, our system, including uh, iOS and Android application run. If the platform is iOS, then uh, Google Cloud command something like this. The important point for running uh, the application on Firebase, it it creates when you when you run an an application on Firebase, it creates an uh, random UUID uh, on Firebase to put to put the results uh, of the of the test. So instead of this, we are create uh, we are creating an UUID that we can use in our uh, command line. Uh, if I define the result directory with the UUID that I created with UUID gen uh, as a bash common, then when I run this common, it creates an it creates an uh, project with this UUID. Uh, as a result, I will I will uh, get the uh, result from Firebase easily. Otherwise, it is possible to get uh, this result file. Samely, for the Android part, it, it has some other parameters that you need to define. But in this talk, I will not go deep into these every parameter. But result, dear, uh, parameter is important because we will, we will grab the data from uh, Firebase. When I run this command, it, it deletes the result folder and then after finishing the run it gets the data from the file base with this command as i defined with the uid uid is using here this is the google storage link that i want to create this is the this is the static link to the, our project plus this project there is uid and then I will grab the test result in this format. This is the regex that I will get to get the XML file with the test result prefix with a number and it will it, it uh, which has suffix of XML and it will put in result folder. After that, I will uh, I need to export the data to uh, Elasticsearch. Uh, I have an, another Python file to export this data. In this project, I don't use log stash because I will customize the things in the result file and log stash mostly using for generic solution, but this is not a generic solution for us. Anyway, it is simple with Python script. This is the Python script I am using to, to export the data. Once I, as I said, uh, Elasticsearch provide us as a, uh, a J, uh, REST uh, REST API to send the data to the Elasticsearch. This is the Elasticsearch URL that that is running in our local. And uh, the important point uh, for exporting data, I need to create a time based uh, time based stamp uh, to to separate the data. For this. I'm just getting the time now and separating time uh, and formatting the time in a desired way, desired format. And then for the test folder, it is something like this. What I can say uh, for Kibana, I need to separate the data from each one. So I am using a new, uh, new value, new parameter in Kibana, it is called time string. This is important because every other data is coming from the XML file, but this data is inserting by me because I want to use this data to 
uh, to uh, separate the grab in the Kibana. I will show you later. That's all. That's that's it is that easy. And I want to show you the Docker file. Uh, Docker is using most commonly every, in everywhere. So we are also running the Kibana and Elasticsearch on Docker. Uh, for these purposes, we have a Docker Compose file. I'm using the Docker image from Elastic official driver. It is the version of 6.6.0. Uh, and also Kibana, it is the same version. Version. Yeah, that's it. When you type Docker Compose up, it, it can run your local. That's, that is easy. This is the uh, thing that I am saying. Um, Elasticsearch and Kibana is running on my local. We can see it in our system. Elasticsearch is running for uh, 9,200 uh, 9, like this. It is ready. And this is the Kibana part. It is running on my local. It is localhost 5,601. They are ready in my local and it can be run anytime. Okay, let's see what how we can run the test. As I said, this is the this is our local and all I have in here, all the secret is here. When I type bash run test with under it, it's it uploaded the APK file. And then start the test on Firebase like this. It is finished with failure. And then with this comment, it is getting the it is getting the XML file from there, the test result. There is one test result getting from Firebase. And that's it. It took seven minutes and 33 seconds for Android one. I will not run on this time because we won't we will not wait for that long. And this is the uh, this is the iOS part. It is the same, everything is the same. It is loading the application on, on the Firebase and then start testing with our defined XUI test and giving the result here. But as you can see, it is it's the text. Uh, but we need to get some uh, we need to get some XML file from there. So as I said, we are using this UI and getting this related data from there. Yeah, that's it. When I checked, okay, let's see the Kibana file again. Yeah, it is here. Before this one, I just want to uh, manipulate some data in our test result and see what's happening in there. It's in here, this is for Android test. There is one failure and for success. For, for iOS part, there, is, there are four passing. Let's manipulate the data and see what, see the result. I just want to, this is the Android result. As I said, there is one failure. I just deleting the failure and saving our result file. For the iOS part, as I said, there are four tests and none of them are failing. I just want to add one failure to see what, how we can see it, it is result in Kibana. Okay, it's enough. And I need to export this data to Kibana to Elasticsearch to see the result. With this one, I am directly running the uh, Python file for exporting data. Okay, I'm doing the same thing for iOS. Yes, we are exporting the data to Elasticsearch. And It is not running, so I manually 
click the merge button and then see the result. Yeah, for Android part, we have no longer failure here. The last one is this. For iOS part, it's also, we are adding one failure and this is one, this is the run one, uh, one before. And this is the last one. We are adding, adding a failure on it. Okay, let's see what is happening here. In here, we have some saved object like this. We have search for Android, search for iOS part. On top of it, we are creating a visual, visualization for iOS and Android. Um, I want to add a new, uh, I want to add a new graph which is uh, defined to uh, our iOS UI test. Let's do it together. Okay, when I go to discover, uh, discover menu, I see that all the data is here like this. And I want to add a new search by uh, changing the previous run, uh, previous to search uh, search items, such as if I change this one to test and save it, I see that these are the data just for running our IES unit test. And I will create a data, I will create a uh, uh, graph for uh, UI unit test. Let's save this search with different name. This is IES unit test search. Okay. And then let's create a visualization for this. I, I'm going to click visualization, this part. And I want to add a new, new, new graph here. By using, I will use vertical chart here again, the same one. And this time I will use IES unit test search as base search. Yeah, I can see everything here. So, we need to add something uh, something to clarify this graph. With this data, it is not understandable what is going on. Let's define our matrix here. I will add the sum of success and I will label it as success. And second matrix as sum of failure and I will label it as failure. And third matrix is sum of errors. And I label it as error. Let's call it, yeah, we can see it here. And we can change the color. Failure should be something red and error should be something like this. And, but, as, as you can see, I am seeing all the data. So I need to split the data, split the chart. So for bucket part, I will click the split bucket, split chart with column. And for aggregation, I will use the terms and I'm going to select uh, time string, which I created it my, uh, in my script. Uh, and it will order by alphabetically because it's the text and it will be ordered alphabetically as a descending order and five of it. If I play, click play, I will see distinction between here. Yes, I, I am creating a new visualization for uh, IS unit test and I am going to save this as Mm. Oh, yes. Yes. 
test trend. Okay, that's it. I create a chart for unit test. And I'm going to add this to, to the dashboard. It is easy. I just add an add button, click an add button, and I will choose this one. This is the one I created right now. And OK. OK, that's it. Here I am, here I have Android UI, UI test trend, iOS UI test trend, and iOS unit test trend. Yeah, it is that easy. See, monitoring system is very beneficial. Where is the Android part for unit test? There is no. So Android guys should write some unit test or anyone in the team that is that can write, who can write Android test, should write Android test. Then we can see the result. Basically, my talk is about this. And if you have a question, I can have, I can, I want to answer this question. Let me check the log. Guys, I'm waiting some question. Do you have any question? Yeah, by the way, I'm also writing a blog post about this. If someone can understand what's going on here, he can read the blog post. And also there is a there is also a GitHub repository about these scripts and something else. You can also check from there. Hi, Mutsu. Uh, thank you for the presentation. Maybe we can wait. Uh, okay, let's wait some minutes. Then yes. We can, yeah, we can start with. You can use YouTube chats for the questions. Mm -hmm. yeah, I'm, also, I'm also checking from there, but I, I, as far as I see, there is no question. But yeah, if you have any question later, we can answer it on any platform. Uh, Thanks for everyone to join us. I think there is no question, Mesut. Yeah, we can we can stop. Yeah, thank thank you for uh, presentation again. Okay, it's my pleasure. It's, it's it's a great time to talk about the subject. Thanks for everyone who are joining us. Okay, see you guys. <laughs>